What's going on, everybody? Hello, and welcome to another episode of Criticless Cast Unhinged. Today, we're going to be talking about the new film, Monkey Man, written, directed, and starring Dev Patel. Make sure you hang around. If you haven't seen the movie yet, we do a spoiler-free review, so you can at least hear that portion of it, and then we'll actually let you know when the spoilers are starting. But buckle up, guys. Let's do this. Warning. The following show features reviews from wildly unprofessional critics operating without the supervision of professionals. The thoughts and opinions held by these individuals are not to be taken seriously and do not come from a place of intellectual integrity. This show doesn't reflect the opinions of Criticless or its users. Viewer discretion is advised. What's up? What's up? What is up, everybody? Welcome back. My name is Blaine Andrews, your host as usual, and joining me today is Mr. Matt Verlack. Hey, everybody. Good to be here. And Mr. Chris Kaus. What's up? I have I like to, like, look at one of you and then say the, uh, like, fake Matt out so he doesn't hey, know which can- up, camera to see. Like, what do I push? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to introduce Matt over here. <laughs> but yeah, guys, so as I said earlier, we are going to be talking about Monkey Man, the new Dev Patel piece here and it's actually produced one thing i did not bring up is it's produced by jordan peele i don't know if you guys caught that and Mm -hmm. and the whole deal i guess what made me kind of notice it is his production studio which is monkey paw which is more on brand with all the monkey stuff here but so if you ever see that uh intro where it's on the train cart and you see the little monkey hands stirring the stuff that's jordan peele stuff Mm. which now after seeing this film i understand why he picked it up and produced this from what i gather when he picked up this movie um it was actually already like done, and he, he just basically helped with distribution and stuff, from what I gather. I don't think he so. Was... He just, you know, took a finished product and <laughs> right, said, "I'm right. just gonna put my uh, paw print on this and make <laughs> <Yeah>. it uh, <laughs> uh, part of my own thing." Right. Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah. But and I mean, a lot of people do that. Well, and if this is a, you know, an indie film, a smaller kind of production as far as how they handled it, they're gonna need help distributing it and. Obviously, Jordan Peele's had some successes on his hands to have some money, so yeah, true. it makes sense. But yeah, so today we are actually not going to do any of what's streaming, talk about any of that, because next week I will be in Vegas for the whole week, so be on the lookout. I might be, I don't know if you'll see me on anything or not, but I'll be hanging out with the Salty Nerd crew most of the week, and we'll be chilling with Geeks and Gamers and Nerdrotic and all sorts of folks. There's, I don't even know who all is going to be there, but from what I've heard, we'll be, there will be an interesting assortment of folks hanging out in Vegas for this next week. So it's going to be fun. But so we're going to go ahead and pre-record uh, next week's episode as well. So make sure that after you check out Monkey Man, you stop back in next week because we are doing part of our series that we've done a little bit where it's uh, for this one, it is audience loved or no nope. audience hated <laughs> critics loved. And we're actually going to be reviewing uh, Ghostbusters answer the call, which is uh, easily, The most publicly hated Ghostbusters, but as I hinted at, the critically praised Ghostbusters film. So, yeah, you can definitely check out that review when we drop it as well next week while I'm at Vegas. But you guys want to go ahead and dig into everything Monkey Man? Or actually, before we do that, should we talk a little bit about Godzilla Cross Kong? I think we should just touch in on it. Yeah. Just look in Criticless and see what the scores are looking like. Cool. It's been a week. Yeah, it has been a week since we've reviewed it. So if you're on the YouTubes, you can see the scores and and a little bit of Criticless here. And if you have not created a Criticless account yet, make sure to do that. Go to Criticless.com or download the app in app stores, Apple or Android, and come say what's up. I'll uh, I'll be your MySpace Tom and be your friend right away so we can hang out and say hello. And so if you're taking a look here, our audience scores are at is at a 70%, which is dead on what Chris mm. predicted it would be at mm. this week. Well. So, and that's by 38 people. And if you take a look, you can actually see my friends with benefits score, which is at an 82 by seven mm. people. Good I taste. won't spoil who my FWBs are, but <laughs> you know, uh, it's it's sitting at an 82, so it's a little bit higher. So, like for me, if I was viewing this, I'd be like, oh, it's even more so something I'd like to see. Mm-hmm. And I gave it an 84, which is what I landed on after our review last week. But so really, I mean, we've got a decent amount more reviews that have came in here, but there's a handful of boguses. Um, as you can see, 
uh, as I'm kind of scrolling through these, we've got rads, decents, most excellence. People are kind of all over, but clearly on the higher edge of things. So, and there's Chris's with his uh, lovely King of the Hill video. Yep, yep. So. Which I did, you are correct, <laughs> uh, in the last review of this, I did end up increasing my score for it. You and did, I know. I thought about it, yeah. I was like, you know what? And I think it Matt did too, because you're an 85. I'm not sure if where you said you were actually going to land. I think I kind of went up a little bit after thinking on it, after we talked also. Right. Yeah. Now, I mean, I will go ahead and point out, because it got cut out of our last review, if you did see that, we lost a huge chunk of our review and video. So we didn't get to, um, to grill Vex, who was one of our early reviewers and is still catching flack. <laughs> <laughs> a week later for her review and actually did an ex post about basically the fact that everybody keeps calling her fake news uh, because of her review and no one seems to like it very much. It's sitting at a, she gave it a 30% bogus. So hers has been an ongoing debate because she's one of, I think there's actually only two or three boguses in the app right now. Yeah. Because Al actually from um, Film Threat, he gave it a 39 and just wasn't about it either. It seems to be more of our, uh, our, our more critically minded folks, you know, that are, that are grilling this one. But so Chris, Chris won. I guessed a 76, so I was a little higher. And it was actually at a 76 exactly a couple days ago. Ah, and you missed it. Yep. But reviews have been coming in. I know they have. Nonstop. And, and you guys drop one if you haven't dropped one yet. And you could potentially change the score because, I mean, you know, with... 38 it could definitely be swayed by a handful of oh, people. Oh yeah. So yeah, that was that was what we reviewed last week and if you haven't watched our Godzilla Kong review, definitely go check it out. Granted like I said a chunk of it's missing, but we played on it a little bit and it was fun. I kind of touched in on what you guys missed out on that was lost. So I guess now let's go ahead and dig into all things Monkey Man. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to predict the Rotten Tomatoes scores. That's something we do from week to week. So we like to guess what the critics are going to think about this movie. Now, this this film was actually screened at some of the film festivals. So mm -hmm. there were a decent amount of early reviews that popped in. And if you are looking on YouTube right now, it's actually currently sitting at a 65% on critic list from one person, which is Al from Film Threat, who gets to see things early. So he saw it at one of the festivals and mm -hmm. got, and it's been reviewed in here for a couple weeks, I think. Oh, so, okay. okay. Um, yeah, but so I'm sure that quite possibly, as usually happens, we will even have reviews come in while we are uh, are we re reviewing tonight because we just got out of the film and so we're just kind of starting to process this thing and we haven't even talked about it with each other really at all. So you guys are getting fresh hot takes from all of us. So that'll that's that's always fun. I kind of like when we can do them back to back. It's it kind of yeah. adds to it instead of sitting on it for multiple days. For sure. Yeah, I mean, I know I tend to forget things I want to talk about. Right. When I sit on it, right. versus the drive home, thinking on it, and then popping in the studio. Right, and then I kind of what I've seen is another fun part of it is as we're doing this live, where our thoughts can kind of change more oh, yeah. because we haven't even processed it. So yeah. like as we're talking it out, we're like, oh, you know what? Like I didn't even think about that. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and guess what the Rotten Tomatoes scores are from the critics, and then we will go ahead also and guess what we think our audience score is gonna be sitting at on critic list, and we'll touch back in on that. Well, actually, we might not. It might be two weeks, but we'll we'll. We can touch back in on that and talk about it a little bit, you know, after I'm back from Vegas. So I guess, guys, who wants to go first? What do y'all think about where the critics are sitting with this? Because I have not had this spoiled for me. Yeah, um, I'll think on it. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't hurt yourself. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, I think I'm going to give it – I think the critics, sorry. Let me, okay. Let me clarify for everybody. I think the critics are going to give it a 90%. Ooh. Matt is going. Wow. Critics That's are impressive. gonna love it. Right, I like that. Well, Matt, um, I'm and gonna then give audience. Oh, that's right. Yeah, go ahead with your audience guess. Continue. On critic list. On critic list. Yes. I think it's gonna sit at like a seventy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's 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 what I'm thinking. Okay. 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 Yeah. That sounds fair. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, Matt, is I'm gonna give you unless Chris wants to screw you over. I'm gonna give you that ninety range, and I'm gonna guess an eighty-eight from critics. Oh. Okay. So I'm going to come in right behind you for the critic guess. I bet Chris is going to come way You fool. <laughs> He's going to be like, you've fallen into my trap <laughs> once again. <laughs> so uh, for the audience score on Criticless, I think we're going to be, man, Matt, that's a really solid guess. Um, I'm going to guess a 76 for our our audience score on Criticless. Okay. Y'all are 
close. Yeah, we are really close. What are you? Yeah, you think, Chris? You know, I have jumped around. Actually, I said at the beginning of this before we even started that I had my score already picked out, Mm -hmm. and then I started thinking about things. (laughs) I actually started thinking. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. And it's changed so much. I actually was thinking that I was going to be the highest, and I was going to go into the '90s, and then I started thinking about the movie, um, and I was like, "There's certain parts that aren't critic friendly." I feel okay. like we can talk about that later. I'm going to say a seventy-eight. Huh. Ah, okay. okay. So you're still only ten away from me. Yeah. So yeah. we all think that this is going to be a solid tomato score from the critics, correct? I believe yes, because that's what a sixty-five and over or something I say, like that. So who knows? Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Something like that. And I think audience, we oui? you going to be? You said seventy. I did. You said, said seventy six. Yep, yep. Our go. Hmm. Who are the people that are on our? App? <laughs> <laughs> Who are they? <laughs> Who are they? Really cool people. Um, yeah, so super I'm gonna cool say people. Seventy-seven. <laughs> oh, you do. <dude. laughs> uh, he's pretty much guaranteed. Uh, all it's got to be is, you. Yeah, he really did. You got me, buddy. All right. So the other thing I wanted to talk about was our themes. We we kind of sure. dug into that a little bit more as we've kind of been doing the show. So just to give you an idea of the themes of kind of how we would rate this based on language, violence, all of those things, and how we would kind of score it in our review within the app. So. As far as language goes, and I think we probably will agree across the board, it's a ton. Yeah. 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 We're sitting at a ton uh, for the language. And honestly, even so, violence, a ton. ton. Yep. Uh, Nudity Um, and sexual content. I would say a lot. A lot. Yeah. It's not a ton. It's not a ton. There's not a lot of nudity, but there's a lot of sexual content. Right. Well, there is some There's nudity. There's some like one nudity. scene, I think, yes. actually. Yes. Yeah. So you get some doggy style, mm-hmm. if you're wondering. And you get a flash of like side boob. Oh, there was side boob? Yeah. It was literally legitimately yeah. a I... flash. No, no, but it was like a shadowy, shadowy flash. I, I like two side boobs. I, I blinked through uh, two side boobs. Dude, Sorry, you man. Class. <laughs> I am disappointed. You gotta pay attention. Uh, and then the political bias. This is the one I was most interested to talk about before we start this. I which and we're gonna try and address this without talking spoilers, which is another so hard thing. The quandary <laughs> is yeah, is that it's if you take out U.S. politics, right? Because this is in India, right? So this is India politics, yes. So I don't know how to quantify that left and right, R- right? <laughs> um, but on but a it does scale. go one way. <laughs> Well, maybe, maybe, maybe. But yeah. then, as we've talked about with other films in the past, sometimes political bias can be interesting because if they ride the line well enough, even though it has political things in it, we could even say that it's technically none because you can't really sway it one direction or another. It's not right? a bias. It, it's not. It's not a bias. Mm-hmm. It's just there is no bias. So yeah. the question is, do you guys think that there was a bias in this, or do you think it was balanced? Yeah, and I don't know enough about Indian politics to right. say which way it leans. I mean, there is definitely a ton of political tones in for it, sure and it's a huge part of the movie so right but is it biased i don't know enough about it if you, you know? were to view it through an american lens where do you think monkey man would sit if, if it, it was america oh, like if a right wing person or a left wing person if they were to view this do you think either of them would feel like it was catering to them or not <laughs> I don't know, Matt. What do you think? Yeah. I kind of think it goes both ways. I right. think it's both left and right here. I, I, I kind of there's do certain too. parts that I'm like, okay, well, that was very left-ish. Right, right. And this is very right-ish. Right. But because, I think overall, yeah, I would say it leans left. I, I think that's the same. where my gut. But it'll only be slightly because it kind of goes both ways. R- right. If yeah. it were to go in one direction or the other, I would send it a hair left. But I, I don't even know if I would quantify it as our slightly left bracket, it's like in between that and none. Right. Uh, See, so yeah, yeah, I okay. think I'm going to put slight left. Slight left. If, it was, if it was like gun to my head, you yeah. have to choose one or the other right. kind of a situation. Mm-hmm. It... <laughs> dead. <laughs> You're dead. You're dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd be dead for sure. Um, I'll just die. Yep. Yeah. Cause I, so what I'll say is that with this scale, with how I think about it, there are, if you are a more right-leaning person, mm-hmm. um, there is a certain bit of subject matter in this that will potentially trigger some of the more sensitive right-leaning people. Trigger! <laughs> Those snowflakes. Right, yeah, exactly. So, uh, but really, I mean, the 
I could see some themes really resonating with some right wings folks as well. There's some anti establishment stuff mm -hmm. in here, some anti government. So, yeah. you know, but the, so it's, it, it is really hard. I, you know, this is going to be a toss up as to how people, because there are certain people in the app that I know will say this is slightly left at the very least, right. but mm -hmm. then there are plenty of people who will just put none. Yeah. So. Anyways, and then as far as friendly family friendliness, if you haven't picked up God, thus far, uh, yeah, don't show your children or you're a monster. Like yeah. this is an extraordinarily yeah. violent graphic film. Period. In mm -hmm. Every way possible. So I have it currently marked as 100. percent Just kidding. It's down to a no. So yeah, we've gone ahead and ran these scales as how we would do it in the app, and definitely do the same if you think about it when you're in there because it really helps everybody to um, really land on if yeah. there are certain themes in the movie that they kind of tend to avoid. Well, and honestly, I'm ex I'm very interested to come back to this mm -hmm. next time and mm -hmm. actually look at the political meter because Agreed. I'm curious to see after like two weeks time what people are going to be thinking. Right. I agree, because uh, there's also, we didn't mention, there's a lot of religion in here as well, which yeah. tends to be on more of the right side of the spectrum, but, but it's the type of religion. it's not shining the best light on it. Right, so. exactly. It's not shining the best sign. Mm -hmm. Which it, is, well, in my mind, the religion portion of it is more left-wing. Right, right. I guess that's a good point, too. Yeah. So, But, well, we'll get into it later. <laughs> yeah, th this is, this is going to be an interesting chat. Yeah. So, I guess we'll, we'll, right now, we will go ahead and go into, this is more of like our actual spoiler-free review. We're just going to talk about the movie a little bit. And then we'll tell you guys when to bail if you haven't seen it. So, now if you don't know, Monkey Man is essentially a tale about vengeance. This is about a young man's journey to get back at those who have wronged him. And it's a and it like Matt said, it is set in India. There, I, in the beginning, I was like, oh, is this like gonna be? very much a foreign language film mm -hmm. but with it being dev patel who is i guess probably considered more american these days you know he's spent a lot of time here so and he knows that this is going to come out to an american audience he ended up putting more english in it than anything you will read some but not a ton yeah as far as the subtitles go but now this is a uh, hard r as we mentioned before so there are going to be certain people that if they are just not into hyper violence um, this is not going to be your bag. It is also, as we mentioned, a more indie-s type film that was picked up by a larger production company. Obviously, this is, well, not obvious, but this is Dev, as far as I know, this is Dev's first real outing as a director, writer, all-in-one kind of a person. So this kind of does have more of some of the um, indie tones to it. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, it very much is up Jordan Peele's alley, but it is going to have an audience, I think, but I, I don't think there will be, I personally don't think that there will be a lot of people going to see this that don't like it simply because they know what they're getting into, if that makes sense. Say that again? So uh, being that if you've seen the trailer, now Chris mm, has not yeah. seen the trailer at all. So I'm actually most, mm -hmm. he, does, he knew nothing about the movie that we were seeing yep. whatsoever. Actually didn't really even know what movie we were watching when I was sitting there. <laughs> right, uh, right. Just before it started. And with how ambiguous it goes in the beginning, yeah. uh, I'm sure you were I really wondering what the hell was happening. So I, I, before I guess get I get into what I was saying a moment ago, what did you think? I, I kind of want to know your thoughts on it. Um, It's... I've got a good bit of critiques about it. I think overall, um, it was enjoyable. I liked okay. it. Yeah. So I would that say sounds, it's a, Is that a rad territory? That sounded like a rad like comment. No. I would Mo put this in the 70s for myself. 70s? Yeah. Yeah. And that could change. And that'll be a rad. So it could be an upper rad. Yeah, yeah. But, which is fine. Like, rad's good. That's yeah. not a bad place to be. So, yeah. yeah. You know, if and you're... It's bounced around. Just like my idea of what the critics are going to choose... Mm -hmm. Right. My opinion of this movie has changed over the past few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> All, it's constantly changing. Right. Thinking of different things and how much I enjoyed it, the things I didn't enjoy. Right, so, exactly. But right now, so, I'm at 78. Matt, you did know more about what you were getting into. Only a little right. bit. I honestly didn't know that much either. I knew it was, you know, an action movie and that it was rated R and appropriately rated R. Right. Um, now, kind of going in more or less blind ish. This movie was all right. <laughs> all right. I, I think it's Ooh, somewhere in the decent range for decent. me. Decent. Whoa. And I debated maybe doing a low rad, but the more Whoa. I sit on it, the lower my score goes. Really? And I don't know if discussing it will make it go up <laughs> right. or not. It could. I'm very curious to yeah, see. You guys might witness Matt's great awakening. He might come from a decent to a rad. Wow. Uh, maybe. 
Maybe. You know, or maybe not. I was actually thinking about you some while we were watching oh, it because yeah? I was like curious because you have such a specific type of movie. Yeah. And I was like, and you don't like John Wick movies either. Not that this is John Wick, but if honestly, kind of disappointed. I expected a little bit more little John Wick. Right. Wow. Yeah. I mean, if I were to give a descriptor for this, which is kind of funny because Slumdog Millionaire also starred Dev Patel. And some of the cinematography styles and some of the things done in this movie mm-hmm. actually did remind me of some of the things done in Slumdog Millionaire. Sure. This is kind of like Slumdog Millionaire meets John Wick, honestly. No. That is, no? no. You got it a better one? Jason Bourne. Jason Bourne? But it's like a not as or good Jason Bourne. Bourne. Okay. So this is Slumdog Millionaire meets, meets Jason, Jason Bourne. Bourne. With the fight style, actually, I could as see that. As a rookie. As a rookie. Yeah. Okay. I like that. That's what yeah, I think. That's not, that's not bad. All right, so with me, I am definitely I don't know where on the score range yet, but I am in most excellent territory, hands down. Like this okay. is this is a Emmy for me. Um wow. I don't know if this is a lower most excellent mm-hmm. or like it this isn't like a ninety five percent, but this is somewhere in the like eighty two to ninety percent okay. range okay. for me. I had a freaking blast. This movie I think is badass. I now what I will say, and why, why I say that I had Matt in mind at certain points, <laughs> was because there are some slow parts in this movie that I think a lot of people aren't going to be expecting, especially with the way that it was advertised. If you've seen any of the trailers, Monkey Man looks like a balls-out action movie. It looks like it is just going to be Dev Patel beating the shit out of people for two hours mm. straight. That is not what this movie is. This movie has a lot of deeper message to it. It is talking about religion. It is talking about politics. It is talking about coming up as a poor person. It is talking... There are just so many points that this movie hits on, but then it also says, like, I'm going to give you hyper-violence and let you watch Dev Patel, like, ram knives through people's throats in very interesting ways, which I will not spoil. So... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which we can talk about later. So, yeah. I mean, it goes all in on the violence and the gore, but and it is a little more out- art house in how it is filmed um which yeah. I, I don't want to get in too much of it is but this is a very gritty gritty dark movie mm-hmm. for the majority of it but it also really gets into the indian culture the indian lifestyle the different types of people that exist in their yeah. class systems so uh, but i i loved all of that okay. and but as watching it i was thinking like man i bet matt is just like when's the <laughs> fucking karate happening like <laughs> where are the fucking dragons <laughs> right where <laughs> where are the lightsabers <laughs> exactly yes so we're yes yeah, okay no exactly. no 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 honestly my beefs are more with well we'll get into it okay we'll so i guess is there anything i want to say before we get into spoilers or are we really just want to get into the nitty-gritty uh i mean this it's not spoilers for me like a, a, most of my gripes aren't spoilers right so uh, as somebody who's hard of hearing you know, there was times where I wish there actually let's, would have been more. subtitles, let's even with that. Let's yeah. save that. We'll we'll we'll, we'll, not we'll talk more about that. that. That's part think? of the review, though. Like, I want to actually like break that down. Oh, more. break that down. Well, surface level, oh, surface level. If you have hearing problems, I kind of agree. It, there is certain points where accents are very thick, or people are talking quieter, and it can be hard to hear what people are saying in this movie. I mean, yeah. it, it does happen. Because I have a couple gripes, and that is definitely really a big one. I have issues sometimes sometimes i don't i think because we were in dolby and mm-hmm. the sound was still pretty clear i didn't really have any issues but i think if we had been in a regular theater i would have had problems watching this yeah. because of just picking up certain words and the ways that people because i mean when you mix in a thick accent and possibly someone talking quieter it's going to be hard to understand some of these people mm-hmm. so but it is that's where most of your gripes lie is there anything that's just with one of them. We'll no, just want to like so but i don't want to offend Matt anymore so we well, can just let's get into the spoiler review we can actually talk right. about Matt, it Matt just, Matt just he's ready he's I am. Down. <laughs> we're here just dilly dallying shut around. the hell up chris and let's <laughs> get to the meat and potatoes mr dragon wants the excitement <laughs> he doesn't want to sit here and tickle the pickle for 2 oh, right. hours yeah. before we get to the meat and potatoes we talked about this earlier i don't like edging yeah, i want to no. get there zero edging he I'm just ready to wants to get straight to the peg out, you know what I mean? <laughs> really, just release your it. dragon. Yeah, yeah, release it. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, guys, it's spoilers now, so we're gonna talk about shit. It's gonna get uh, spoilery. So if you don't want to spoil, bail. And th- that's the last I'm gonna say about that. You dirty <laughs> bastards. So, <laughs> yes. so yeah. I mean, I, 
I guess, Chris, go ahead and go back. Say what you were going to say then. Uh, yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah, just they're not spoilers. Just like my two, two of my major gripes with it was the audio. So, again, I'm hard of hearing, so that might not be an issue for other people. But there's times where I wish they would have had subtitles or, you know, for it. So it, it turns out that it, I didn't. I don't think I missed anything of significance because I got the gist of the story and, right. you know, where everything was going and characters and where they lied and stuff. So uh, it was just like little things. It, whenever you're going to a movie that you've obviously never seen before and you don't know anything about, like anytime I don't hear something, I'm like, shit, I just made missed some like major plot point. Um, but the other thing would be the wait, 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 cinema. Can I add to that? Yeah, go ahead. So like my, that was one of my beefs was they would say something. So first off, there would be super loud blasting music, which I don't normally pick up music. Like you talk about scores and stuff. <laughs> right. And normally it's like, okay, it's subtle. No, this movie blasts music, and then they'll turn the music off real quick, and th they'll say something. Right. And my ears had a hard time adjusting from them blasting music <laughs> to trying to say something. I'd be like, what the fuck did they just say? Like, yeah. And that's why I was like, man, I wish they this was just subtitled. I wish they were just speaking. Right. Uh, huh. A different language, and I'd actually know what they were saying. That's yeah. And really then they'd have a little conversation. I'd be like, "What the fuck did they just say?" Yeah. And I'm good with accents. It's not the accent thing. It was right. like how they were cutting audio, huh. and it happened multiple times. That's really so. There's multiple times I was like, well, "I don't know, I just missed, but I think I missed something." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that didn't happen to me at all. Like really? I straight up like not. Well, eating. I mean, look at them suckers. I know. I mean, <laughs> like, I got <laughs> full blown satellite dishes. You like I, thing, I am <laughs> picking this shit up. Like Dumbo's just over here. Like <laughs> I was picking up every sound, baby. Oh yeah. But I, I, yeah, it didn't really, it didn't really get me. Now, what you were t about to touch on, I was curious. Yeah. I think that there yeah. will be people that the cinematography does bother. Yeah. I liked it a lot, but I it sounds hated like it. you really. Well, okay, so. I hated it, but then it changed tones. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's this most jumpy, shaky cam. I hate that shit in anything. Right. And this was just, like, people walking down the street, and it's just like, ah, <laughs> what's going on? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But kudos to them. Whenever it got to the action scenes, the fight scenes, they got it was, like, yeah. steady cam, And I'm like, what? <laughs> You're, like, doing a, f a swippity swappity. It's 100% like, <laughs> agree with you. That was yeah. another one of my big beefs. Yeah. Was just the shaky camera work the majority of the time. Right. I, I Sometimes shaky cam can bother me, but for whatever reason in this movie, now in the very beginning, I was like, ooh, maybe we should slow down on this. And then I was like, you know what? I feel like Dev is, like, establishing his style, and mm -hmm. he is wanting this very grounded gritty like this movie is gritty and grimy and gross most yeah. of it and i think he wanted to put you down there in that level and just make you feel like it was boots on the ground you're just deep in this world just absorbing india in the way that a person would see it and that's what it felt yeah. like and and then i kind of switched the way that i was thinking about it midway th well not even midway earlier on and i was like you know what i want to approach this that way yeah when, it, when I noticed that it was aggravating me a little bit. And for whatever reason, when I did that, I was kind of like, oh, I don't really mind this anymore. Like, it doesn't bother me. That's wild. See, I tried doing that because I had the same thought. I yeah. was like, okay, we're trying to feel gritty. Like, he wants us to feel a certain way. Yeah. And so I tried to have those same thoughts. And, and it I, didn't. Like, I just kept noticing how shaky the camera work was. And the fight right. scenes were great, but yeah. just so fucking shaky when it didn't need to be shaky. Right. One of the scenes where I noticed it the most was when he was getting chased by the police was when it was the most egregious in, yeah. throughout the movie as far as at its peak was like them chasing Dev around through the, right. you know, the little shanty areas. Yeah. And it was just like just jostling you around. I was like, yeah. certain people are going to vomit. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was getting nausea, not really, but yeah, it was, this is probably the most extreme movie that I've seen this in. Like it, I, I don't, I can't think of any other, even like, the Bourne movies did it. The Bourne it movies. Back that's when. Lit. It, it was. Yeah. I don't think it was. It wasn't that this bad much. That, it wasn't this much. Mm. I haven't seen them in a long time, so right could be. But it, I mean, it felt like excessive artistic expression. Like right. I understand that you have a you know you're trying to portray it a certain way or have the audience feel a certain way about the environment and the story, but I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a filmmaker, but it just <laughs> seems like that's excessive. Like you can get the point across without doing it that much. Yeah jostling around and, yeah. and even like the focusing like they had so much stuff there would just be scenes of things completely out of focus yeah Again, he did a lot of that artistic expression there, whatever i just mm -hmm. i'm not a fan of it that's all. right and that's that's kind of what i was gearing at earlier when i was talking about you know the more art house right. you yeah. know indie vibe of this is there is a lot of like something is happening and then quick cut to like some weird shit yeah like or just a weird angle or like 
a match striking, but it's so close up that like maybe that's what it is or maybe it's not. Like, yeah. you know, I could literally be looking at Satan's anus and wouldn't know. Like, I, I have no idea what this is. <laughs> there was a part actually where maybe we were when yeah. Dev Patel re- rips his chest open. Like, I have no idea what we were looking at there. It was wild is that I actually enjoyed that part of it. Did you? Like, the actual, like, this, the fractal kind yeah. of like, it, it, it wasn't meant to be anything. Like, no, you, it, it was, was him on drugs. It was great. Like I was like, okay, they're actually doing it at a time when it's fitting. Is right. whatever he's mm-hmm. tripping balls, but right, yeah, not not a not a fan. Not a fan of that part of, of yeah, that. Those are like my two major gripes of it. Right, and yeah. so as far as I guess, because I, I do have more praise than complaints with this movie, um, but I do co- totally get where y'all are coming from, and I could have predicted, <laughs> I could have predicted <laughs> that that's exactly what the complaints, at least from Chris, would be. I wasn't entirely sure about Matt. Yeah. I was curious if Matt was just going to say that like the the slow parts or like the downtime was boring. Um, I don't think the downtime was boring. There was a bit. There was a lot of it, and there it is. seemed to be the same. They, they drug out his history a right. little too much, I think. But they did, to a point in which I thought that this movie was two and a half hours. I just went and looked, and Monkey Man is only two hours. It's not even a full two hours. It is an hour and 53 minutes. This movie actually felt quite long. It did. Which is a problem. It kind of is. A, a movie that's under two hours should not feel like a two and a half hour movie. Which means there's some pacing issues. Yeah, and I think that the pacing issues is the drawing out the history, his history. Right. Because that they, was very unnecessary, and there's ways you can do it much better. And other action movies have done this. Yeah. Right. Similar storylines in a cleaner way. And he does take more of that artistic approach where he holds the reveal for really what is happening until the last act, basically, or right before the last act, Right, I but, guess. And it's true, but to go to kind of like feed off what Matt was saying is that like, it was so, it was done so many times and over and over he was like saying telling the whole story i feel like there wasn't that much depth or mystique like if it was some kind of a twisty story or right. story like i knew the first time they showed that dude standing in front of the fire that was like the only flashback he right. had i was like oh this family got burned up in a fire and fire. that's why his hands yeah. are fucked right. up yep. and it's like 10 minutes it. 15 minutes in the movie whatever it's like so I already know the whole story. They didn't right. add anything to that. There wasn't some like, oh, right. well, I mean, I guess the guru well, guy being involved. I was about to say, they, they did expand right. on the Slight the twist. One person. Right. Yeah, by yeah. being, it was, you know, the guru was doing it so that they could build a, a right. plantation. Yeah. Or it's not a plantation, factory. but a factory. A factory. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so basically the reveal just wasn't really worth the prolonged Correct. wait. And I, I kind of agree, especially for how long they teased it, which I was trying to think and I was wondering, because, you know, typically when you talk about film, a lot of times people talk about, like, the three-act structure. Sure. And I was like, this movie almost kind of didn't have one. It almost was more like four or, or five. five. Maybe. Like, it, it, it was in these little bite-sized piece, pieces, which I think maybe is what didn't work in its favor, mm-hmm. because yeah. it, it was like these little pockets of of certain events and times and like the the last act quote unquote i think really starts about when he goes back to fight for the last time in the arena Mm -hmm. but like that's in the last less than 30 minutes of the movie yeah so that that's it's hard to really quantify that as like a last act yeah which i think is maybe be some of what drug it out a little bit yeah, and then back to the pacing issue. So another beef I had with it, I don't like. This is kind of my last beef with the movie. I think um, was so he had been this fighter. You know, yeah, he was like losing fights, but he was a fighter for who knows how long, and should have learned how to fight. Right. So he gets the guts up. He sneaks into this hotel. Like he's got this whole thing planned out, and then like. He chickens out, sort of, like, he fucks up his kill plan. He can't fight his way out, basically. And right. I was just like, what the fuck? Like, I was really surprised by how bad of a fighter he was. Which I, I liked after we figure out where it's going. No. You didn't? <laughs> you didn't like that? Nope. No. Nope. He should have been a good fighter. Okay. He still got his ass beat, but been a good fighter. Like, we should have had some good fights in, well, up front. Well, I, I think he was a good fighter to a degree. I think what they were showing for us is that, well, so when he had his kind of awakening and he did the drugs, the the guy was like, well, the yeah, lady, uh, the person was like, basically, they said, you know, hey, like, y- you've been viewing your life losing. 
like it's time for you to essentially like it's time for you to win. Yeah. And it, it kind of triggered for me where I was like, oh, I think that Dev, all of this with him, like it wasn't that he was a bad fighter. He wasn't. He was like, I'm going to win two rounds and then I'm going to lose when he was yeah. talking to the guy previously. I think he was a good fighter the whole time. Mm -hmm. Not like next level with his strength and everything, but actually a good fighter. But it was that he was just throwing fights and was told to throw the fights. And we just weren't seeing those because we were watching him inten intentionally take a beating. And I think he was also intentionally taking a beating because he wanted to train himself to be able to get the shit kicked out of him so that when he went and took his vendetta, like, if he was losing, he could still get back up and keep going. Yeah. Like, I think that that was the whole point of that. I think there's another level to that. I okay. think it was also kind of, I mean, which it's not like any kind of subtlety. They're pretty sure that the people in the temple, monastery, whatever it is. Yeah. <clears throat> was basically telling him that like you're just your vengeance and anger can only take you so far like right i feel like he was so it, it was so caught up in his emotion and of wanting vengeance and being in anger like you know he had to walk out of every room it was just like right whatever he got was right. thinking of, he couldn't he control his control. emotions mm -hmm. exactly so it was more of like a finding your center uh, right so but i mean just in addition to what you were saying right, as right, well right. but uh, i think that's also a lot of it was very spiritual coming to um, you know, acceptance with who you are, where you are. You're not defined by your past. Mm -hmm. Don't let it control you. Right. You have a psychedelic experience and unlock your third eye. Right. Yeah, no, I agree. That's that basically easy. where they were getting. And that's I, easy. I, that is Because yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. is like even when he was training, it was more of like strength training. Right. It wasn't really like well, It was also really training. short. It was only like 20, 30 days, something yeah. like that, wasn't it? Right. Yeah. It wasn't a very long time. I think he got beat up like 25 days before Dwali. Yeah. Right. And then it was at the celebration. So, yeah. So, right. Something. So, it wasn't like a true, like, I'm going to spend a year training to actually get stronger. It was like you were saying, Blaine. It was more of like a right. mental unlock. I guess just more my beef with that opening fight was that it just was, I don't know, it just seemed half-assed. And so, I was just like, well, this sucks. Like, <laughs> right. It wasn't like he was, like, throwing his all into it and still right. got beat. And right. then really had to unlock himself. And I, yeah. It was that he was just such an underdog, like, I'm going to lose. I'll give in. Right, well, fight. and I think that that was Dev's whole point, I think, is that he was like, this isn't another John Wick movie, and this is an origin story. He's like, I'm going to give you what you think is the meat and potatoes, like, really fairly yeah. early. And he gives it to you, and then you're like, oh, he, he's not that good. Like, he got distracted with this gun in this dude's face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's another beef. But this is my beef with, like, Dude, yeah. every action I agree. Action I already movie. know what you're saying. I agree. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> They they took the the time to focus on this is before the first fight where he tries to kill the guy right the police officer they take the time to focus in that the cop had a gun on his side and so did his bodyguard right and it's just like all these people had guns where did they go whenever they're fighting I, this what, person like he f they focused in on them having guns yeah like when well, they were in that VIP line so the yeah. first time that. Dev. Dev. Yeah. Uh, sees his arch nemesis. Okay. They fo it focuses on him having a gun, the cop, and right. his bodyguard having a gun. Speaking of, he's never named in this movie. I don't know if y'all noticed that, but he. Yeah, they just call him the Monkey Man, or yeah. he gives himself a name. Right. Because he calls himself Barry. Uh, Barry. 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 Yeah. It is wow. Barry, right? Yeah. He's he's Maybe. he doesn't have a. Yeah, I think it was Barry. I think it was. It was like Barry's. Barry about the bleach. Because bleach, the bleach. Barry's bleach or whatever. Yeah. yeah he. What were you gonna say, Chris? Well, that was, an no, yeah, that yeah, was yeah, I'm gonna say something, face. Yeah, I'm did. pretty sure snorting powder oh. bleach <laughs> would do more than just a little nose nosebleed, bleed. brother. I was yeah. just whenever I was working at that camp, I was in a closed, small, like single person shower right. at a dormitory, and I would clean with powdered bleach, bleach. right? Like powdered bleach. It's yeah, yeah. Like, this is like industrial grade yeah. shit, right? And it fucked up my body real bad. Mm -hmm. like, you shouldn't put it on your butthole. When they say that you bleach in your asshole, that's yeah. not how they do it. Yeah. <laughs> you live and you learn. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, like, it, it, uh, it fucked It'll up my nervous make you pass system. out. No, like, the next night, I was, like, I shit pissed, like, running everything. Jeez. It was just, uh, like, oh all my of my God. bodily functions were just, like. <laughs> <laughs> everything just spewed yeah. out of you So from the it bleach. It could have been something else, but I'm pretty sure <laughs> right. it was the bleach. Right. You probably just ate salad. It usually does that to you, so yeah. the lettuce. Yeah. Yeah, it. it <laughs> so I think the guy sh I I think the guy should have died who snorted the bleach. Right. Uh, yeah. I think snorting the bleach. I mean, we've snorted chili peppers. So 
uh, flakes, chili pepper flakes. Yep. So I mean, and I can tell you that Pixels. that is terrible. Don't mm. do it. Mm. Absolutely, do not snort chili flakes. You should probably you should snort nothing. Snort nothing. I mean, well, we I smoke like straws. We snow. This we. Guy. Yeah, I don't. Uh, Matt <laughs> snort nothing. Clearly, he missed out on a lot right. by not growing up with us yeah. in childhood. Yeah, like, yeah I didn't there, smoke uh, straws. There, <laughs> I didn't. Loser. Snort uh, yeah. chili pepper. You, you, you probably didn't even launch a single firework out of your butt. Oh, like, no. Not even one. Out on that <laughs> you ever run down the street taking a shit? Yeah. You ever done that? No. You've never? Right. See? No. All these life you stories. Know what I have done. <laughs> We're kind of Chinese fire drills. We are. <laughs> Sorry. What Chinese have you done? Chinese fire drill. Yeah. Yeah. Chinese, oh, oh a cute. Chinese yeah. fire drill. Classic. Oh, I did that God. when I was eight, too. Yeah. No, like three. Come on. When I was driving. We were driving cars and doing Chinese fire drills at three years old. Yeah. Matt's out here yeah. doing it last week. He's like, I'm breaking the law. <laughs> he's, he's I'm pretty go- cool. You, you are. are. You are. Very cool, it's, it's clear that you're so edgy, Matt. He's clearly <laughs> just looking at you. Us, he's, he's, oh, well, definitely know. more yeah. intelligent. Driving you know. out of windows into rose bushes. Oh, God. There's so many things. It's yeah. Oh, man. We just had no care for our lives. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a shock that we're not dead. <laughs> so, I guess <laughs> one thing I do. So I do. I want to talk about this so bad. And I, if if this didn't hit for you guys the way it hit for me, mm-hmm. then y'all suck. Um, Could be this when he's in the final battle, and the fucking metal music kicks in. It was just like. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, Man, I need to listen to some more hardcore. Oh, music. for real, for real. The metal music kicks in, yeah, and, and it's just like six to midnight. That thing just straight up, baby. Mm. It was, I was ready to rock. I almost wanted to whip out my phone to Shazam the song. Oh, I, that's what I was like. What's the song? That's what I wanted that metal song to be my song for this week. That's what I was looking for uh, okay. before we did the show, and nobody's posted it yet. So uh. I, I want to know who does it because there's there's a scene. If you've seen it thus, and you've made it this far, either you've had the movie spoiled or, you know, <laughs> but yeah, where he's he's finally kicking ass and the the trans army comes busting through the door, which we haven't talked about yet. Oh, yeah. And and God, they just start kicking ass and people yeah. are just getting fucked up to metal music. And it's just like, <laughs> oh, yeah. like it was so good. It was, that, yeah. that scene was legit. Like, yeah. honestly, the entire like. I find, at least for me, that regardless of everything that came before, the from the second that he enters the ring as the Monkey Man for the final time, from there on, this movie is just like firing on all cylinders. Yeah, like, it's definitely the best part of the movie. Yeah, yeah, Dev kills that last act. I agree. When it, when it picks up in the last act, it's definitely the best part. Because that's the thing. I was debating during the movie. I was like, is this a decent? Is this a low red? Is this a decent? Is it a low red? I'm still not right. sure. I'm still like leaning on a low red or a high decent. I just, right. I don't know. And that was, I did the same thing except for decent, most excellent. Yeah. And then finally, when we got around to the last act and like really where it was going, I was like, all right. Yeah. It's most excellent. Well, yeah. I was more on Matt's. We're, we're very similar on yeah. this yeah. one. Because like, like up until that point, like halfway through the movie, I was like, 50s, 50s. <laughs> really? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Because it, was it because of the slow bits and like the build, the just the taking so long to build up, and between that and the cam and yeah. you know, just all it's that. Just kind of all of it together. Right. I was just like, it's predictable, right? You know, like at that point, I didn't. It, there wasn't anything really surprising about it. Wasn't anything really new being done. I mean, that's kind of true. Um, I will say there's there is like sexual trauma for anybody who has triggers with that that probably should have been said before spoilers but mm. uh can be it's not like intense but yeah um yeah i don't but now you know after seeing the full movie i am you know in the rad territory for sure right it, yeah it, it it was bouncing around for me and it's weird now having our critical scale that as you're watching movies, you kind of <laughs> do that now. You're yeah. kind of thinking about your critical scale. And which, I mean, like I said, I kind of compared this to Slumdog Millionaire, and that's directed by Danny Boyle. And Danny Mo- Boyle has a very specific style of film that he does as well, and it just felt like Dev was influenced by that. Mm-hmm. Obviously, early on, it was his first breakout role. Like, he freaking killed it. That was an amazing movie. I've seen this, I- I- honestly... It- Matt, turn the camera on yourself. <laughs> Folks, this this man is to blame for the fact that we are all red-faced from <laughs> laughing and from sadness, from anger. 
every oh, yeah. human emotion. Matt, take the camera off you, and they don't want to see you anymore. <laughs> I Listen. will just say, that only oh, happened God. once, Blaine. <sighs> is the reason this is happening again, though? <sighs> Listen. This is our third time. Not the first. Not the second. But the third time that we are recording the end of this show because of technical difficulties. The first technical difficulty was due to our soundboard, which caused, or well, I don't even, it's not a soundboard, it's a, a recording device. And I'm trying to hold it together the best I can, because basically we recorded the end of this podcast again a second time to where Matt forgot to turn the audio on. So we have a video of me just going... For about 15 minutes, <laughs> along with these guys, you oh, yeah. know, occasionally piping in. And um, now this is our third take. So basically, in short, you guys missed about 30 minutes of a podcast twice. Uh, <laughs> and now we're here to do it again. But what I we're not going to rehash a damn thing because <laughs> I'm not talking about it again. But what I'll say is we did dig in a little bit more to the trans characters in this and, and the fighting, you know, trans mafia and whatever happens at the end of this movie and the critical reception of it and just all the ins and outs of that and how it will potentially be received by you guys and by the critics and everyone, which and we've said the critics, we didn't really see much hubbub about it up until now. So there's a good chance that they don't have any issues with the way it was handled. And it was fairly tactful but i don't even want to really get into the the nitty-gritty of this again uh so you know you missed out on two wonderful conversations and you can just sit in sadness all alone <laughs> listening to us <sighs> lament about how we have lost everything that we have lost tonight and mm -hmm. then you can just once again look at the face of the man who caused this problem for all of us. And he's just so proud of his failure. I've hey, never I'm seen anyone I've never seen anyone wallow in their shame the way that Mr. Verlack does. Yeah, I don't know uh, what you're good at. <laughs> yeah, I mean <laughs> like if nothing else, it gave me a great laugh and yeah. I've been wheezing over here. <clears throat> uh, so it's great. I've, yeah. It's been a fun time. Yeah. And basically the long and short of it is it's uh twelve thirty at night now. <clears throat> we started this many, many many hours ago and uh we're yeah, finally like nine o'clock when we started well and that's not to include the review that we watched it or the movie we didn't well, watch yeah. the well we have watched our review of us not talking <laughs> and we've watched our review of the partial one and you know but yes the movie we started at five o'clock so we're, we're a couple hours running now but either way that is does not matter guys you know because we're here for you that's what really matters you know that's why we do this so <clears throat> We're not going to talk about critics or what they think much. <laughs> the only thing that matters that you need to know is that this is currently sitting at an 86%, 88% on Rotten Tomatoes, and that's what I guessed, and I was right, and I'm a fucking genius, and I got it dead on, and I knew exactly what they think and thought and what they were going to say, and that's all that matters, folks. And then outside of that, you could go on Criticalist.com. We currently have two reviews, one of which being Sin's Quarter and the other which being Al from Film Threat. They both gave it uh, a rad, a 74, and a 65 so you can go read those make sure to leave your reviews for monkey man as well and <clears throat> we'll check back in at some point potentially about what you guys think uh in a later review it'll probably be like two weeks from now to kind of see where this landed on the audience score within criticless and really i'm just i want to go ahead and get to the send-off songs i want to let you know what kind of music we've been listening to so I am going to go ahead and let you know my music recommendation, which I've had out three times now, so I should have it by memory, but I don't. But what I am recommending is The Last Dinner Party's song, Nothing Matters. This is a chick rock group. They're really good. The song's a banger. The music video is very much like what movie that I keep asking Saltburn. you about? Saltburn. Saltburn. That's it. It's kind of like a Saltburn music video. That doesn't really matter, but make sure to go check out our playlist that's attached to our channel so you can go send it, see our Send off songs there. And Chris, mm -hmm. what are you recommending? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever we're doing here, man, I, I wish everybody could do this because it's <laughs> so much fun. <clears throat> 
Uh, what I'm recommending for the send off songs that we send people off with that are songs <laughs> is uh, this is a deep cut, by the way, because it's what I did on one of the other <laughs> recordings was say the word send off songs 47 times. Uh, Go ahead, Chris. It's a song by Ecstasy with two K's, <laughs> and it's called All Right. <laughs> Thanks. All right, my song is a 21 uh, pilot song called Overcompensate off of what yeah. will be their new album coming out soon. Yeah, yeah. Go check yeah. out check out all those songs. Check out the, the Send Off Song playlist and and let us know what you think about those songs. And more than anything, let us know what you think about Monkey Man. As always, hop on Criticalist, download it if you haven't yet. But my guess is if you've hung around this song, you probably have. And thank you so very much. We love you all. And thank you for putting up with this shit show of a show because <laughs> it is poorly managed and i take zero responsibility for anything that happens here matt verlack is in charge of the day-to-day -day operations of recording and everything else so he is, this is why we're unhinged it is the legitimately part of our unhinged. it is un <laughs> uh, uncontrolled unorganized <laughs> un yeah it's just unbelievably un fun unbelievably fun yeah that's it guys and on that note fuck off <laughs> Peace, love. Later. Ah. <sighs>